Good morning, how are you? Hope you had a lovely weekend. It's eight o'clock on Monday morning. I'm outside Old Trafford, the theatre of bad dreams, as it's been called at the moment. But today, hopefully fans are going to make that change that they've really been wanting for quite some time. Since 2005, the Glazers came in and things since Fergie left have gone from bad to worse. Have a look behind me. Nobody here at the moment. The scarf man. Always pay homage to the scarf man. They work their absolute backsides off. Later on, it's expected 10,000 fans are going to march down the Talbot along here to Old Trafford and make themselves heard. Are you going to be part of it? Do you want to see the Glazers out? Is there anyone out there who actually wants to see them stay? The door has been opened. Jim Ratcliffe, Sir Jim Ratcliffe, the richest man uh, in the UK, apparently wants to buy the club. That's offered Manchester United fans that little bit of hope. Casemiro, five-time Champions League winner, here tonight at Old Trafford to reinstill that hope that possibly they can contend for top four this season. We'll see what happens. We're going to stay with you till the end of the night. So it's a big day here and Anthony Carolla, former lightweight world champion, is the biggest Manchester United fan. But you're a little bit nervous. Yeah, of course I'm nervous. It's um, any game against Liverpool is nerves. You don't enjoy the build-up. You just enjoy the gloating after it. But obviously we've not had too much going to do after it. And I think when my season tickets just now, we're going there, which is right there. You know, right next to the... Um, Away fans, there's obviously a lot of things getting shouted back and forth. It's uh, yeah, it's a lot of nerve stuff. Um, I wanted to ask as well, Glazers out. Do you stand yeah, with that? Absolutely, it's um, I do, and I probably sound a little bit of a crystal because I might struggle to be part of the process because I've got like my eight year old lad in, but I try and explain to him, you know, what they're doing at the club and how we want them out, how we want them out. But yeah, no, I just think you know, the, the simple line is, you know, now how they got the club back there, they would not be allowed to do it now. It's, it's disgusting what they've done and, you know, you'll get opposition fans, oh, it's different when you was winning, you spent this, you spent more money on transfers, on transfers than, you know, so many clubs and blah, blah, blah. But it's, it's wrong what they're doing. There's just, there's not one bit of passion behind them. The club's been run as a business for so many years and, so I love this place, I love this place, but, but you know, when you look at certain stadiums, mm. I like how they progressed and things around it. They, they've just got, they've not invested one penny of their own money into the club. How long before Manchester United start contending again? It's, um, oh wow, <laughs> was, we knew it was going to be um, a rebuilding process and I think, obviously, since Fergie went, we knew it would take a little bit of time, but it, it looks like it's going to be a while yet. And that's my thing now, I think. I mean, chopping, changing, managing off on that. I think we need to give Ten Hag a few years. Yep. I really do. And um, let him build the team he wants, get his philosophy across. And see, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But I just think the chopping and changing the manager is far too often for me um, in recent times. Anthony Crowler, good luck for tonight. Thank you. I might need it. So we've been speaking to lots of people from fan channels, from Manchester United pages as well. And this is Charlie Morley from United Stand. Hi. Hello. How are you? Yeah, good, thank you. How are you? I'm well. Um, how do you feel tonight's going to go? Obviously, the, all the focus is on the protest for now. Are you part of it? Yeah, luckily I only live kind of five minutes down the road, so it's quite easily uh, to easily accessible to, to get down and, and be a part of it. But yeah, the main aim is obviously for it to be a peaceful protest. We don't want kind of anything anything like last year where obviously the game got cancelled. That's obviously not the aim. We don't want any you know, flares or, or even any fights, anything like that. It's not it's not something we obviously want. So yeah, the, the main aim is, is peaceful, uh, peaceful protest. I think that's important as well that that message has been sent from so many different groups because there have been so many young children wandering around here from eight o'clock as well today with their families, with their friends, you know, just wanting to be part and see their teams play as well. So it's important that they get that message right. Yeah, definitely. And that leading on from that, the, the obviously hashtag that's going around the empty Old Trafford, I think that it's, it's very hard to obviously expect you know Manchester United is such a huge club that a lot of a lot of fans are going to be from overseas or young children as you say so it's very harsh to expect them to obviously empty Old Trafford when it could be you know their first game or one of the only games they're going to get to watch this season so yeah it's obviously quite difficult. This is Beth Tucker from United Stand you're my favourite person that I've met today. Hello thank you you're my favourite person as well. <laughs> um, your message is very clear that come rain come shine come Casemiro come anything else <laughs> The message is clear, Blazers out tonight. Yeah, that, that's the message, as we were just saying before. it's Everyone's happy about Casemiro, everyone's happy about that signing, think he's a brilliant player, don't take away from that. Everyone's excited to watch the game, everyone wants us to beat Liverpool, but the main thing for United fans is today is that we're going to be able to play Liverpool again, we're going to watch Casemiro play many times, but this is 
the exact point that we need to push the glazers out because of all the pressure building Jim Ratcliffe coming out and putting that bid on the table on social media this is the most amount of pressure they've been under even when the Super League was happening I feel like now more than ever the money's running out so it's time to protest how many people do you think is going to turn up tonight then? well we were saying before 10,000 but I was saying I genuinely wouldn't surprise me if it was even more than that because when the Super League happened last time people didn't expect it the protest to be that big and the game actually ended up getting called off it was it was it was a massive protest so never underestimate United fans is what I would say a lot of people hate the Glazers so I wouldn't expect even more to turn up than what I was expected Beth what's your prediction for tonight I like to be optimistic I never predict a United loss but you know what I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna go 3-1 Liverpool just purely because of the, the, the difference in the quality of teams is massive isn't it Beth thank you enjoy the game thank you <laughs> So it's been absolutely pedalling down outside, so we've come inside to Hotel Football and the main man Flex is with me now. Hi. How are you? I'm very well. Um, we've been here since very, very early. Are you tired? Uh, I, I just need a stretch now and, I, and then I lie down. Um, and it's not even near kickoff yet, but it's really starting to build. I've spoken to so many people. The message is clear. Glazers out. Do you agree with that, Flex? Absolutely. Yeah, I think if you're a Manchester United fan who has an understanding of what's been going on at the club for the last 17 years, um, you will come to that conclusion. I think we've been running to the ground. There hasn't been that continuing development. You look at what Manchester City owners have done across there in East Manchester, not just with the playing squad, but the actual redevelopment of the whole football club and the area, the youth teams, the women's team. Um, it, goes, it, it, it goes miles and, and there's so many good examples of well-run football clubs. Yeah. And Manchester United, you know, the biggest club in the world, seems to be one of the examples as, as the worst-run football club. So time has come. Would you protest today? Would you do the march? Absolutely, yeah. That's why we're here. We're, we're, we're going to be covering it here on United View as well. And I think one thing I don't do is, is tell fans what they must and mustn't do. I think you should be able to do it in the way that you want to do it. If you want to go into the stadium and be vocal against the Glazers, absolutely. If you want to boycott the game, absolutely. If, you, if you're outside the game and you want to be in the, in the protest, absolutely fine. I think everybody should do it in their, in their different ways as long as we're united in doing so and being firm in our voices um, and behaving. Yeah, absolutely. Um, if 10,000 fans march up tonight, a message will be sent, you would think. Yeah. I've decided to make my way out here because that got a little bit weird for a little while there being in and about that smoke bombs flying about um, getting launched at the police and at the horses and I just feel start to make me feel a bit off but anyway we're out now um, I definitely feel like that might have been <laughs> I definitely feel that that might have been successful for the, the protesters and the fans who are now making their way into Old Trafford. Um, a message was sent, that's for sure. Thousands of people predicted about 10,000 there. If not more, it felt like more for a strong while there. There was a huge presence of get Glazers out. Um, interesting times for Manchester United. Now it's game time. <laughs> 